Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Presented by the Idiot Radio Network. Operating a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling. With guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devereaux. Your boy's back, Stephon Devereaux. Yeah, the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. We are here, another monster show. We jam-packed these 30 minutes. I mean, seriously, we jam-packed. I mean, we can go all day and talk about wrestling if we want, but we don't. I only give you a half hour. You know, that's, that's courtesy of uh, Got to show some courtesy to my Spotify listeners. Showing love to my iTunes people. Yeah, showing love to the Google Place. Yeah, we're loving it. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Comedia Pro Wrestling. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Let's get into some pro wrestling news. Oh, man, big, 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 big news. Big news. Now, I consider this big news. You may not consider it big news. But this guy's been here since 1990, November of 1990. November of 1990, this man's name was The Undertaker. Where it is, he won't be performing at WrestleMania this year. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. This day was bound to happen. We knew it was coming. But the rumor on the street is The Undertaker will not be performing at WrestleMania. Now, we knew that was going to happen, like I said. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's take it a step further. He has removed all WWE markings from his social media accounts. Hmm. And uh, let's take it a step further than that. Let's go a little further. I like that. Some fun. He's also accepting bookings for appearances, not to wrestle. But for appearances. Now, I don't know how true these rumors are, but he's asking for 25000 an hour. Sheesh. He wants his money, obviously. The man wants his money, which I understand. We all want to be paid. But you add those few things, those three things up, and it looks like The Undertaker's out. I'm dead serious. I really believe The Undertaker's done. I think he's done with the WWE altogether. I think he's done with the WWE. Why do I believe he's done with the WWE? Because he's telling you right there. So the WWE off his social media accounts, he's accepting the parents' fees. I mean, won't be, won't be performing at WrestleMania. You know, WrestleMania is the Undertaker's house. They thought Shawn Michaels Mr. WrestleMania, but no, that's the Undertaker. He is Mr. WrestleMania. He won't be there. Are we concerned? I'm concerned a little bit because he's a staple of the WWE. You got Hulk Hogan. You got The Rock. You got Andre the Giant. You got Roddy Piper. You got The Undertaker. You got Steve Austin. Did I mention The Undertaker? (laughs) Shawn Michaels to a certain extent, but let's be real. He's not The Undertaker. Triple H, yeah, to a certain extent, but he's not The Undertaker. So The Undertaker, uh, WrestleMania without The Undertaker, he completely... Who seems to be healthy. You don't think he could come out there and lay a tombstone on someone real quick? Can't give you 15 minutes of The Undertaker? Does he not want to do the traveling before WrestleMania? Or did he get, does he just want to show up, make an appearance? Is he going to get paid 25000 an hour? <laughs> but anyway, that scares me. Because this goes into a deeper issue. A deeper issue that's going on in the WWE locker room. We're going to talk about that later. Because I'm telling you, this guy's into something bigger going on in that locker room. Now, do I believe he could be handled? Of course I do. This is the WWE. This is Vince McMahon. He's the godfather of this business. And I'm not talking about, well, he could be the godfather, you know, from the old WWE days, you know, the pimp days. But... There's a bigger issue going on here. It's a bigger issue going on. We're going to talk about that. 
We're most definitely going to talk about that. So what do you what do you think about this news about the Undertaker possibly not being at WrestleMania, possibly leaving the WWE for good? Now I do not want to hear. Oh well, he got that. Hey, he got by Joe. No, I don't want to hear that. No, please, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to hear that. And I just came to my mind real quick. I was thinking last week, remember how I was saying that this AEW thing is kind of scaring me now since Tony Khan has been revealed as the creative director? He kind of scares me. I was thinking about something that I seen on uh, Facebook. And I actually, after listening to the Tony Khan interview uh, with Dave Meltzer, and I don't want to leave this Undertaker subject, but we're going to get into the Tony Khan situation real fast. And I promise you, next segment, we're going to come back to the Undertaker. I promise you that. Because it ties into something bigger that's going on in the locker room in the WWE. But, so Tony Khan does this interview with Dave Meltzer. And he's talking about the, the love he has for certain businesses, certain organizations that no longer exist. Continental Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, Continental. Continental has been, been around since the what, early 90s, maybe 90. I think that was probably maybe the last year of Continental. It's a long time ago. Tony Khan is 36 years old. This kid's young. How does he know? What does he know about watching Continental Wrestling? There was another organization that he brought up, but we won't talk about that right now. I won't. I won't talk about that. I promise. Because I don't want to pick, <laughs> pick apart what this man is saying, even though we should if you're a wrestling fan. Let's talk about something else that Tony Khan said. So something he said to Dave Meltzer about the climate, about the, not the, not the, 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 the world's climate. I'm talking about professional wrestling. And now he saw this as an opportunity to come in and, you know, do something major and blah, 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 blah. Okay, look, Tony, I got no beef with that. You want to come in and you want to make some, some noise? I get that. Professional wrestling is a place you can come and do that. But let's be real, Tony. What you're doing right now is just throwing, throwing paychecks to dudes. You're throwing cash to dudes. They're not even going deep for their, their paychecks. They're doing five, <laughs> five yard routes and they're cu- turning around the balls right there, the checks right there. They're, they're barely doing anything. So we'll, we're going to see how this happens. But they're getting paid a lot of money. They're getting paid a lot of money, which is crazy to me because they have not proven anything. They have a big pay per view coming up May 25th in Las Vegas, double or nothing. Can't wait. Okay, can't wait to see what they're going to produce. All in was really good pay per view as well. But I can't wait to see what they do with double or nothing. Here's my thing you're offering a lot of money to these wrestlers. Kenny Omega just signed, he turned down a, a very lucrative deal to sign with the WWE. He decided to go to AEW because he wanted to be with his friends. And from what I understand, the AEW, well, they made him an executive vice president that has been confirmed, so he's going to have some power. Okay, I get that. But, man, what happens when, if this thing doesn't work after the first year? Are you guys going to be invested long-term? Will you be invested long-term into this, this project? See, that's why when I say this is, kind of, this is getting interesting with the WWE, because think about it. You hear news of The Undertaker, like I just said. When you hear news of The Undertaker possibly not coming back or re-signing with the company, news of Dean Ambrose, and we're going to talk about him too as well. When you hear about stuff like that, Kenny Omega already made his choice, and think you just hear about these things. Man, makes your interest, your interest, or excuse me, it piques your interest. Of course it does, but this scares me with Tony Khan. What if he's not invested for a five-year plan, because you know in professional wrestling, you're going to come out with a new company and you're going to put this much money into it. You can't have a five-year plan. It's got, it got to be 10 years. It's got to be a 10-year plan. What if they're only invested for three? What happens? See, the boys are starting to hear about all this money being thrown around again, and they're, ooh, their ears are lit up. Eyes are bugged out because they see these paychecks being handed out. But I caution you people, I caution you wrestlers, before you turn down a sure thing, which is Vince McMahon and the WWE, you might want to look at some of these other companies that were startups that had a bunch of money backing them up and 
They didn't last no more than three shows. Now, am I saying this is going to happen with AEW? No. I believe that they're honestly invested in it, invested for at least three years. I believe this. I truly believe that. But it's after three years. Those three years go quick. And there's something that WWE has to do in order to, let's say, stop what's about to become Talent Raid 2020, as I want to call it. Talent Raid 2020. Because that's when the talent rate's really going to happen in 2020. And someone brought some things up that's going on in the WWE locker room that made me think, wow, talent rate, talent rate 2020 can be huge in the professional wrestling business. One pebble in the, in the lake, whew, ripple effects are going to be beautiful for the boys. But for wrestling fans, ah, I don't know. So we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Because it does tie into what I was saying about The Undertaker. And what this WWE Hall of Famer had to say about what's going on in the WWE locker room. Stephon Devereaux. Stephon Devereaux Show here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. Weebly.com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there. A how to text a guy to keep him interested. Weebly.com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24 hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, Call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Steph on Devereaux, the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Here on Angry Kids 24 7 Wrestling, or radio, excuse me. Ooh, Freudian slip. Angry Kids 24 7 Wrestling. Ooh, that has a nice ring to it. Hmm. Okay, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Let's have some fun here. Okay, so um, I was talking about The Undertaker and his decision to take the WWE name off of his social media platforms and so forth. And the fact that he's going to be taking a a parent, well, we doing appearances for a nice fee at $25,000 an hour. That's the rumor. And he possibly won't be wrestling at WrestleMania, which is the house of the undertaker. I won't say the house that the undertaker built, but it's his house now. Okay. Some guys helped build that house. Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, you know, you can go on and on and on. But there's a wrestler, former wrestler, who's now going to be working backstage in the WWE, and he is a Hall of Famer. I'm not talking about Jeff Jarrett. Did an interview recently on a Sam Roberts podcast, and that WWE Hall of Famer is Mark Henry. Mark Henry brought up some situations that he thought could – be handled in the WWE that can make them better as far as the locker room. And one of those situations that he said was lack of leadership. I quote, 
Taker's gone. Big Show's injured. Cena's busy. These are leaders that are in the WWE who are not in the locker room anymore. Mark Henry is one of those leaders who was uh, who was absent. He will be back. But he feels people are arguing and fussing a little bit too much. They're being very disrespectful when it comes to wives and girlfriends. He's really he, he's he sounded really emotional, um, but he also sounded like a guy who knew what he was talking about. And I understand why he's emotional because this is the company that he's been at, been been with for 23 years and it's made him a lot of money. You know, he's become a star. But this lack of leadership, this is what I'm talking about. In the WWE, the problem that they have right now, in my opinion, because you don't have a guy like the Undertaker who can go up to Vince and say, Vince, look, we've done Braun or we've done Roman long enough. These guys aren't getting over we need we need to find another direction. You know, we have to. You don't have these guys anymore. The Steve Austins, the John Cena's. You don't have these guys anymore. John Cena, Seth Rollins brought up a story recently where he went to uh, John Cena and talked about, uh, he gave an idea to John Cena. This was right before WrestleMania, uh, the WrestleMania for Brock and, and Roman, where Seth Rollins uh, cashed in his money in a bank. The number is not in my head. What, 31, 32? It don't matter. Anyway, probably 30. Anyway, um, but he said he went to John Cena with this idea of him cashing in his money in a bank at WrestleMania against Brock and, and Roman because Roman's not pretty much he, – he's not getting the reaction that the company or the office expected. And John Cena said it was a great idea. So Seth Rollins – you know, a few months later or whatever, went to Vince McMahon and pitched the idea to Vince. And Vince, of course, he went with the idea, obviously, because what happened? Now, a guy like John Cena, you go to him and he says he loves your idea. You know, that's valuable. Now, I'm not saying it was a great idea because I just thought it was stupid. But it was valuable to have a guy like John Cena to have in his ear, to go, you know, put some knowledge in his ear, let it – you know, go around in his brain for a little while, and then John Cena comes back with an answer, yes or no. You know, or give you his, his opinion on that, that story. We need those guys in the locker room. Undertaker is one of those guys. He's not there anymore. So Mark Henry is on to something here about the, the lack of leadership. A lot of stuff that's going on in the WWE locker room has to do with lack of leadership. Who are the new leaders in the locker room? Because it seems like there's none because there's a lot of chaos. Guys want to leave. Well, I understand the reason why guys want to leave because they see a new paycheck out there. So, of course, they want to get paid. And they feel they're being underutilized. That's your fault. You go to their office and tell them, look, I got an idea. Let's try this. The office waits for you to come to them and present ideas. Your job should You shouldn't have to wait for the office to come to you. You got to go to the office yourself. And guys in the locker room, like an Undertaker, like a John Cena, like a Steve Austin, guys who are not there anymore. You know, Bret Hart was, you know, talked about in that light as well years ago when he was in, in the locker room. They're not there anymore for, to give you that type of advice. They're not. They're absolutely not there anymore, which is sad. Which is sad. This leads to situations like Dean Ambrose turning down a five year. Seven figure doll, seven figure a year contract offer from the WWE. Now, those are the rumors. I still think the whole thing's will work. But anyway, I could be wrong. But when you have situations like that, Dean Ambrose is a talented guy. Do I think he should be in the WWE? Of course. But Dean, he can complain about his storylines and the lack of opportunity all he wants. But Dean, it's in your hands, bro. It's in your hands. Unless you are continuously pitching ideas to the story to the writers and these guys are turning your stories down, okay, I get it. But this is in your hands, Dean. But if you had a guy in a locker room that he can go and talk to about why the office is doing this and why the office is doing that, then it might be a little bit easier for a guy like Dean Ambrose to say, okay, let me take this contract in. Because now they're going to run to a situation that's uncertain. All elites is uncertain. 
I said three years. I'm giving them three. Okay. But it's still uncertain. You know, when you have these type of leaders in your locker room, which I'm very happy that Mark Henry is, is coming back to the locker room to help out in you know, that new backstage role, which he really didn't give a title to, but we'll see what happens. Probably name him something, give him backstage producer or whatever. But let's be honest. When you have guys like this in your locker room who's been there for 20-some-odd years, these other guys can learn. They, they can go and pitch these ideas. Look, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but here, let me tell you what I think. Mark listens. He's oh, okay, well, I think we should run that past Vince. Or he tells you, you know what, maybe you should go and, you know, uh, tune that up a little bit, come back, and we'll see what we can do. They don't have that anymore. Triple H can't be that person. So I'm very happy that Mark Henry is doing this. And this is why I don't understand what's going on with The Undertaker. Does he not want to be on the road anymore, Just period? Why can't the WWE offer him a nice chunk to say, look, we need you to back back there in our locker room and make sure these guys are doing their jobs? I'm, like, baffled by this whole situation. But lack of leadership. It was a good interview. Go check it out, Sam Roberts' podcast, Mark Henry. But, you know, I'm concerned. I am concerned because if that happens, if this is the case, man, Something could happen, and this, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, if this doesn't get stopped now, I'm going to tell you this, people can laugh all they want, but the wrestling business is going to take a huge hit. And I'll explain why after this break. You're listening to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, Stephon Devereaux here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested. Weebly.com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there. A how to text a guy to keep him interested. Weebly.com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. We're back. All right, look, we're going to close this show out soon. But before we do that, I want to get into what I was talking about last segment about. Uh, where there's lack of leadership, where it can hurt the professional wrestling business as a whole. And I believe it can. I believe it can, unless they get a hold of this right now. Um, Okay, so, when you have a bunch of guys in the locker room who are walking around with no direction, and then they hear about a new company coming out of nowhere with a ton of money, and they're ready to spend a ton of money on wrestlers, I mean, of course your ears are open. Of course your ears are open. So if AEW, All Elite Wrestling, they got your attention now, 
and now you're you're looking at your career in the WWE, and you're like, man, dude, shoot, <laughs> what am I doing here? What am I doing? You know, they've done this with me, done that with me, and it hasn't worked out. So what should I do next? Well, I'm going to put some fillers out. Now these guys are all running over to a company that's willing to pay them a lot of money. And like I said, let's say this company doesn't win, doesn't, uh, doesn't profit. Let's say this company is losing money. No company wants to lose money. And no company can lose money and stay in business unless, you know, you – you know, bustling or something, you know what I'm saying? You use it as some trying to clean some dirty money. But we ain't going to talk about that. Because <laughs> there's some people out there that use professional wrestling to do that, but we ain't going to talk about that. I'm not one of them, I swear. <laughs> anyway. But when these guys are seeing this, the lack of leadership comes in, comes into play because now these guys, they can't go and talk to that guy in the locker room to say, look, man, you know, I heard... This is a new company. I'm not being used right here in the WWE. What should I do? You know, should I look into it? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, I know this guy. Let's talk it. Let's look. Let, yeah, you know, I can't give you the advice, but look, I can look into some things. And that's usually what happens. That's what happened when WCW was there. That's what happened when ECW was around. You know, you knew someone. This one right here is a little different. But these guys are going to jump at that paycheck. And when they jump at that paycheck, how does it hurt the wrestling business? Because of these guys, if this business, if AEW found some way not to exist in four years, what does it do to the wrestlers? What does it do to the reputation of pro wrestling? Because now, when AEW signs their TV deal, and let's say their TV deal doesn't work out because they are losing money and they're not drawing ratings, let's say this doesn't work out. Now you have a TV network. And the rest of the TV industry, who's not going to be willing to give a company like Ring of Honor, even though Ring of Honor has their own, pretty much their own network, syndication network, and um, New Japan, or if they want to do something, Axis is not, and I just noticed, they're, Axis is, <laughs> they're airing Women of Wrestling. Wow. Yes. Wow, is airing on Axis Wrestling, or Axis TV, but that's another story. We'll talk about that next week. But now you, I mean, so there's other, there's ways that this thing can hurt the business. Long term. And it starts with lack of leadership in the top company. I know you keep saying, how does this all how how does this all come together? Because it does. It starts at the top. All these guys can start, they're gonna start finding ways to get to AEW. AEW is gonna have an overpaid talent roster. With more options out there, it's harder for you to come to have a, a company where you're paying so much money to keep running, to keep it going and paying, oh, my goodness. Now, am I looking at their books? Of course not. But I do believe that the lack of leadership in professional wrestling, namely the WWE, is leading to what we have right now in AEW. Better leadership? I don't think AEW exists. I don't think Tony Khan decides to do this. He might go and buy a TNA. But I don't think they try to start their own company. I can continue on the subject all day, but we can't, of course. We have to go. Don't forget, March 8th, call your volunteer fire department. Stephon Devereaux will be at Undisputed Championship Wrestling, the final show presented by Adrenaline Championship Wrestling. Yes, great company. Um, don't forget, you can go to Facebook, look up Undisputed Championship Wrestling for more information. And uh, we are out. Stephon Devereaux on the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. I'll see you next week. You're listening to Angle Kids 24-7. How to text a guy to keep him interested. Hmm. 
a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together, and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested .com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested .com.